glad you could join us again as we uh, take a little time to fill you in on some upcoming events here at the church. Uh, take just a moment or two in prayer to kind of uh, settle and center our hearts and minds and then listen for what God's Word might have to say to us today. Let me begin by just sharing you some uh, news of the kingdom uh, within the church that we want to let you know, some things coming up. Uh, first, let me look back. Last Sunday, we, we resumed receiving our noisy offering. We used to do that every month. Well, we had our first one last week. We collected $338.55, and that money will go to the Spring Heights Day Camp, which will be held at the House of the Carpenter uh, here this next week or so. So we're thankful for everybody that helped with that. A couple of other things. This Sunday, August 1st, uh, we have a couple of things going on at the church. We have our 9 o'clock Shine Worship, 1045, traditional worship service. And following that 1045 service, uh, right around noon or thereabouts, there will be a reception held downstairs in the fellowship hall. And you're invited to join us. Uh, we will be celebrating the ministry, music ministry, of Marion Martin, who's served on staff as our music director for 11 years, and Linda Steffel, who has served for over 38 years as our piano accompanist. Both of them retired at the very end of July, and we're going to have a brief reception after the service, and you're invited to come and express your appreciation and thanks to them for their faithful ministry in the, in the music aspect of Thoburn United Methodist Church. Also Sunday, Pastor Bill and I have planned what we're calling an informational meeting. It's a mouthful, isn't it? At 5 o'clock in the sanctuary. There are some changes coming up this September. We'll be changing some of our worship times, adding a couple of worship service, doing some adjustments in order to be able to do that. And we wanted to have an opportunity to explain the rationale for that and to... Uh, hear what folks might have to say or answer any questions that we can. That's this Sunday evening at 5 o'clock. Uh, anyone in the congregation is invited to come out for this time. Uh, we'll be here at 5 and we uh, hope or plan to be done by about quarter to 6, 6 o'clock. Also coming up this week, just a few other announcements. Uh, Monday evening, the Mary Reed Circle will resume meeting. They've been off for a while due to the pandemic. Monday evening at, at 7 o'clock, Mary Reed Circle will be meeting in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, Tuesday, we have an Engage Team meeting as we'll be uh, looking over some of our plans of upcoming events. Uh, also, Wednesday at 7 will be the fourth installment of our Kingdom Sports Camp out at Belco Works, behind the workshop at the sports field. We've had three very successful weeks in a row, uh, weather permitting, this Wednesday at 7 will be the fourth and final Kingdom Sports Camp for the summer. If weather becomes a factor, they may suspend and hold that the following week. Otherwise, we're on for this Wednesday. Uh, next Saturday uh, will be on the 7th of August. We'll be holding a memorial service for the light, a memorial service and a celebration of life in memory of Tom McCourt, who passed away uh, during the COVID pandemic. That'll be at 11 o'clock at Thoburn Church in the Sanctuary. Also, next Sunday, that'll be the 8th, at 10 o'clock, that's between the two services, there'll be a meeting about Children's Sunday School. If you'd like to help out with Children's Sunday School, we'd invite you to come out as we sort of piece together how we can do that, the best way of pulling that off. We look at that being offered this fall between our worship service, between the second and third worship service. I think that's most of our announcements. Uh, we do remind you of golden opportunities we have for areas of service in Christ's name. Coming up on Saturday the 14th, we will have a back to school event here at the church from 10 to noon. There will be representatives from the school administration here to answer questions. We'll be giving out some school supplies. You can find a list of those items that we're collecting by going online or checking the flyer in the uh, entryway in the narthex of the church. We also are still looking for folks who can help out on Tuesday evenings at the House of the Carpenter. We only need a team of two each Tuesday from 5.30 to 6.30.
we're looking to reestablish a nursery that can provide uh, some opportunity for parents with young children to be able to be in worship while we, someone watches their children in the nursery. We need your help to make this happen. You can sign up in the Narthex or give a call in. We will give you more details. Also, how many of you have a finger like this that will work? You can uh, bend it and point and push and scratch. You hold the basic talents to be able to help in the tech booth on a Sunday morning. You can push a button, manage a slide, follow basic instructions. We need some helpers as we look at expanding our services. That also means expanding for each service the music options as well as the, the sound and the tech possibilities. So we need your help. If you're interested, contact the church office or contact John Parkinson and we can uh, plug you in to where you can be of help in those opportunities. I think that is most of our announcements at this point in time. How many of you today, whenever you're viewing this, have heard a bit of music? Maybe you have a alarm set that in the morning plays music when you wake up. Maybe you're a shower singer. Maybe you happen to turn on the TV or radio or on your way to work or your way to school, you listen. Uh, one of the things I want to thank God for in prayer today is the gift of music and song. Aren't you thankful for that? Uh, when you stop to think about it, music in and of itself is just a resonance of sound waves, whether it's a violin bow coming across the strings or the plucking of a guitar string or the hammer of a piano, or the keys causing the hammer to fall upon the stretch wires within, or maybe it's the percussion of a drum or the, the volume of a trumpet. It's resonating of the air. That's at basic, and yet we know music can be so powerful. And when you couple music with the poetry of words, somehow it's able to convey emotions and feelings and thoughts and expressions in ways we hadn't thought possible. Aren't you thankful for the gift of music? Well, we'll be celebrating this Sunday with a couple of our longtime staff members that have helped to share that gift with us. And uh, we're going to be talking today about uh, don't lose your song, or if you have, find your song. Also, we want to ask you to remember in prayer some of our members for Mel and Sally Seabright. Mel is recovering from some surgery that he had. For Harriet Moon, whose health has been declining. Also for Scott Thornburg, who's in declining health. For Stephen and Lynn. For Patrick. Uh, for the family of Nolan Bowers. Uh, Nolan was the brother of uh, Rod Bowers, who attends our worship service here and he passed away. So keep the Bowers family in your prayers. If you would, pause with me right now. Father God, at the dawn of creation, you created song. And the great symphony of the world in which we live. We pray today as we listen to your word, that you might pluck the strings of our hearts and restore our songs of praise to you. Our songs of joy, our songs of thanksgiving, our songs of lament. Speak to us through your word, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to read for you a brief passage of scripture from the 137th Psalm. By the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. There on the poplars, we hung our harps. For there our captors asked us for songs. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, Sing to us one of the songs of Zion.
how can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a foreign land? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Don't lose your song. Or I might say, have you found your song? Stop and think for a moment. How many songs do you know? Now, you may not know every verse, and depending on how far back, you may find there are songs you thought you knew, and when you see the words printed out, you discover that the words you've been singing all these years aren't exactly the correct lyrics. Uh, if you grew up through the 70s and on, you know that to be true. But how many songs do you know? When I say that, some of you will think back, maybe, some of you to the 50s, or the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. Now realize, as I say that, for those 40 and under, those are all ancient, golden oldies. Ouch. How many songs can you name that are secular in nature? It might be intriguing sometimes to sit down and write, and you don't really realize until you hear a song playing and recognize it's imprinted in your memories. Some songs get lodged in your memory and in your heart. Some songs can take you back to specific moments. Now, let me be a little more specific. What songs or hymns of faith do you know? What are your favorites? Are they the, the praise songs? Contemporary Christian songs that are, that are popular and coming out new each week? Or are they perhaps hymns of the church? Some that are 30, 40, 50, even 100, 200 years old. Tell me, what hymns or songs of faith do you know? What are your favorites? Can you think of times and places when the words of those songs of faith or those hymns touched you deeply? We talked about this this past week in, in one of our meetings here at the church. And I asked the folks attending, can you remember a time and a setting where a particular hymn spoke to you? Several people commented on the how the hymn, Because He Lives, meant so much to them it had spoken to them in the loss of a loved one. Another shared how as they walked with a loved one through their final days, that hymn, Precious Lord, Take My Hand, meant so much to them. A couple mentioned that a newer hymn, by our standards, Here I Am, Lord. And now at specific times and moments, God used the words of that song to impact their lives. You know, sometimes words alone don't seem enough, and we find ourselves trying to express ourselves through song. Years ago, the gospel songwriter Bill Gaither wrote a song. I want to share the words with you if I can. It's entitled, Then He Said, Sing. He wrote, when God created living beings, he knew they'd need a way to share their fears, their questions, and their dreams. Oh, there are words, but words won't do when joy swells up inside. There simply had to be a better way. Then he said, sing. With a laughing heart, just sing. When the night is darkest, sing. Let your joy explode and let music fill the air. You can sing when there's nothing else to do. Sing when something deep inside of you tells you that life is still a wonder. Just throw back your head and sing. The birds got set on flashing wings to fill the sky with song. He put music in the brook and crashing sea. And the wind blew through the blades of grass like fingers through the strings of golden harps that made the meadows sing. Then he said, sing. The laughing heart, just sing. When the night is darkest, sing. Let your joy explode and let music fill the air. You can sing when there's nothing else to do. Sing when something deep inside of you tells you that life is still a wonder. Just throw back your head and sing. I love that song. 
It's even better when you can hear the music company it, but I'm pretty sure if I had sang it for you, it might have ruined the song in your memory. Throughout Scripture, we find people expressing themselves through song when words alone don't seem to be enough. When God delivered fair, fair, the people of Israel from Pharaoh's army by opening a way through the sea, remember how he parted the waters and Moses and the people passed through and then Pharaoh's army were washed away as they pursued them? Afterwards, Moses and his sister Miriam composed a song celebrating God's provision and deliverance. You can find it in Exodus 15. When Joshua led the Hebrew people across the Jordan into the land of Canaan, they encountered the fortified walls of Jericho. And God gave them a plan on how to take that, that fortified city. For seven days, each day they would walk around the city once and then blow trumpets. But on the seventh day, they marched around the city seven times. And on the seventh time around, they raised a shout of praise, a song of joy, if you will, and blew their trumpets, and those massive walls of Jericho came crashing down. Now there's a brass section that brought down the house. In 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, I challenge you to look up 2 Chronicles 20 and read the story of King Jehoshaphat of Judah. He and the people learned that several nations surrounding them had joined together and built a large army to come against them and conquer their land. And the first thing King Jehoshaphat did was he declared a fast for all of the people of Judah. He called the people to join him in praying to God for deliverance. And as they fasted and as they prayed, God spoke to him through one of his prophets and said, do not be afraid or discouraged because of this army, for the battle is not yours but God's. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your position, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you. So the next day, as the army of their enemies drew near, King Jehoshaphat of Judah led the people in worshiping God. And then they set out to face the approaching army, not in battle formation but as a choir. And as they marched, they joined together singing praise to God, and they sang, Give thanks to the Lord, for His love endures forever. And by the time they reached the battlefield, they discovered that the various factions of the enemy's army had turned against one another and effectively killed each other off. There was nothing left for the king Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah to do, but to gather up the plunder from the battlefield, and that took a full three days to accomplish. King David wrote songs. And we talked about David last week, one of his uh, less glowing moments in his life. But we don't want to forget how many of his songs are recorded in the book we know as the Psalms. David wrote songs of celebration, as well as songs of sadness. He wrote songs giving thanks to God for blessing, and he wrote songs confessing to God that he struggled as he asked questions like, why and how long? He wrote songs where he rejoiced in God's goodness toward him, and he wrote songs of confession, where he acknowledged before God his own sin and brokenness and pleaded for mercy and forgiveness. There's even a book in our Bible. If I were to talk about the book of Psalms, you'd think of Psalms. That is, in essence, the ancient hymn book of early believers. But there's also a book called the Song of Songs or Song of Solomon. If you look at about the middle of your Bible, there's Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Song of Songs. It's attributed to King Solomon who was known for, for his wisdom, but on the other end, for his many wives, it is, don't let your kids know, an ancient love song. It's included in the Bible, and it's viewed as an allegory of the love relationship between God and his people, but it's a song describing an amorous relationship, the story of a lover seeking out their beloved. It's a love song. 
and a racy one at that. When you get to the New Testament, we find the Psalms are considered to be the book of hymns for God's people, but there were still songs being written. If you look at the Gospel of Luke, within the first few chapters, there are four different songs composed and shared. Each one is unique. Two are written by old men, one by a young girl, and one by the angels of heaven themselves. The first is the song of a young peasant girl, Mary, who's been told that she will bear the chosen one of God. And in her song known as the Magnificat, she praises God for his grace and mercy and faithfulness. The second is a song that is the song of elderly Zechariah upon the birth of his son, John, who would be known to us as John the Baptizer. In chapter 2 of Luke, we find the song of the heavenly angels as they sing, announcing to the shepherds the coming of the Christ. And then later you find Mary and Joseph taking the baby Jesus to the temple where they encounter elderly Simeon, who has waited his entire life to lay his eyes upon the chosen one of God. And when he sees him, he sings out a song in which he says, Lord, you can dismiss your servant in peace. I'm ready to die now. I've seen your salvation. His song is known as Nunc Dimittis, Now Dismiss. Four songs within the first two chapters of Luke. Only the lyrics, not the tunes. Isn't it amazing that those songs are preserved to us some 20 some centuries later? We opened our time together with a passage from Psalm 137. From, uh, it's written about the time of the Babylonian exile. It's not a song of praise. It's not a song of joy. It's not a song thanking God for what he's done. It is a lament. That's an ancient Near East version of what we would call the blues. The psalmist writes after the destruction of Jerusalem, having seen the hopes and dreams of the people crumble, having been uprooted from their homeland, carried off to a strange land, in far off Babylon, far from home, far from all that's familiar and beloved. They're taunted by their captors who say, sing some of those songs of your homeland. And in response, the psalmist asks the question, how can we sing the songs of the Lord in a foreign land? after what we've been through, after what we've experienced. We can understand how Mary can sing when she learned that she would bear the Christ child. We can see why elderly Zechariah would have a song to raise in his latter years as his wife gives birth to a son. We can understand the angelic host singing at Christ's birth. They had waited since the dawn of creation for that opportunity. But what about when our hearts and lives are broken? What about when everything seems to have gone wrong? What about when we're facing tough times and nothing seems to be going our way? When we begin to feel that we have nothing to sing about? With the psalmist, we might plead, Lord, how can I sing your songs in a foreign land? my present situation, with what I'm facing. But my friends, that's exactly what we are called to do. Don't lose your song. We're called to sing praise to God even though we do it through tear-filled eyes. Because in doing so, we're reminded who we are and whose we are and who it is that has claimed us. In our songs, we're reminded that our faith is not based on how we're feeling or on everything in our life going as we wish it would. And we don't always find our song right away. The angel Gabriel spoke with Mary, and it would be some time before she composed her song. Old Zechariah had to wait nine long months before his song came to fruition. Until then, he could only sit there in silence and reflect on what God was doing. And it wasn't until his child was born and he was asked what his name should be that his tongue was loosed and he found his song. 
For angelic choirs over the fields in Bethlehem, they'd waited since the dawn of creation for the privilege of announcing the birth of God's own son. Let me tell you, that's a long time to write and rehearse a song. Have you found your song? Or have you somehow lost your song? Have you found your song of praise to God for all that he has done and is doing in your life? Have you found your song of thanks for his many blessings? Have you found your song celebrating his faithfulness even in the midst of problems and difficult times? Perhaps like Mary who rushed off to share the good news with her cousin Elizabeth, Maybe you need to share your song with someone else. Sometimes the sweetest songs are the ones sung together. Sometimes you can't find your song until you find someone else who understands what you're facing. You see, God works not only through our relationship with Him, but also in and through our relationships with one another. Mary and Elizabeth were two women on opposite ends of the spectrum who had no business being pregnant, but together they found a song of praise to God. Maybe like elderly Zechariah or Simeon, you're closer to the end of your life's journey than the beginning. You know, my father, God rest his soul, he used to say, if life was fair, it would get easier as you get older, but it doesn't. Even in your latter years, can you find your song? Can you offer your thanks and praise to God for his faithfulness throughout your lifetime? Looking back, knowing he's been faithful thus far, I can be assured he will be faithful in what remains. As believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, as followers of the word become flesh who dwells among us. As God's chosen, redeemed, and anointed people, we have a song to sing. A melody that sustains us. So what is holding you back? It always intrigues me on a Sunday morning when we get together to sing. B.C., before COVID, we'd say stand and open your hymnals. Now we say read the words in your bulletin, look at the words on the screen, and join us as we sing. It always intrigues me to look out from the pulpit and see the number of folks who sing with their hearts and the number of folks who just stand there. What keeps you from singing? Lack of musical talent? Oh, give me a break. I doubt that Mary or Elizabeth or Zechariah were trained vocalists. Like someone once said that if only the birds who sang best sang, the forest would be a quiet place. Are you shy about others hearing you sing? Well, maybe you should look sometime in the front of our Methodist hymnal. On page 7, there are directions for singing written by none other than John Wesley himself. And he writes, Sing lustily and with good courage. Beware of singing as if you were half dead or half asleep, but lift up your voice with strength. Be no more afraid of your voice now, nor more ashamed of its being heard than when you sang the songs of Satan. Lift to God your songs of praise and thanksgiving. No one else can do that for you. Only you can. And regardless of your vocal talents or lack thereof, God will be honored and blessed by your song you might find your song lifting your spirits or the spirits of another. Find your song and sing it to God. If you're not sure, I'd encourage you to, to, to take a hymnal and read through some of the words of those songs. Hum them, sing them quietly to yourself. Be reminded of all that God has done in this doing. You know, I'm extremely self-conscious about my singing ability. Can't read a note of music. But I can remember when I was a, a working as a college student off, working in a shop, long, hot days, that 
I'd find myself humming or singing a song to just kind of sustain me through the day. I became self-conscious after somebody pulled me aside and said, you know, I used to wish I could sing. Now I wish you could. Don't let your lack of professional ability hinder your song. Lift your song of praise to God. I opened with a song written by the Gaithers. I'd like to close with a, another song from the Gaithers called, This is the Time I Must Sing. I've tasted of freedom. I can go where he's leading, for shackles can hold me no more. I've learned of life's essence, for I stand in his presence and sing with my heart, he is Lord. There are days filled with sorrow and plans for tomorrow, but this is the time I must sing. And I know there's a reason why in his own season, God gives me a song I can sing. Keep silent, you mountains, you fields, and you fountains, for this is the time I must sing. It's the time to sing praises to the rock of the ages, for this is the time I must sing. If I've seen and I've done and I've gained and I've won all the good things that life ever brings, still I've tasted enough of life's miracle stuff that forever I just have to sing. If the rocks would cry out, should his praises die out, then the stones must keep silent as long. As I breath for the singing, his praise will keep ringing, and I will keep singing my song. Keep silent, ye mountains, ye fields and ye fountains, for this is the time I must sing. It's the time to sing praises to the rock of the ages, for this is the time I must sing. This is the time. This is the time. This is the time I must sing. Let me share the words of a more ancient hymn from the 140th, from the 40th Psalm. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit out of the mud and the mire, he set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, and a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord, and put their trust in him. Allow me to close with the words from Colossians 3, 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and exhorting one another with all wisdom, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, as all with grace in your hearts to God. Have you found your song? Thanks be to God.